Thanks for joining us for part two on The Red Couch with April Glasgow. I like how you talk about there's not bad people. No, there's they just make bad choices. Yeah. Bad choices, so. Do you have an example of um, one of the people that's come in and a little bit about their struggle and, and how they've come through? Yes, um, I have a young lady, she has two kids, and her mom, in and out of prison, uh, she was 12, the young lady was 12 years old when her mom first experienced going to prison, um, stealing, petty theft, drugs, she was vulnerable, her mom was vulnerable, um, and she just, she was looking for love in all the wrong places, but tried to take care of her children, tried to take care of, of the young lady that we're working with. Mm -hmm. And the young lady was in and out. She would, she would, she, in and out of her grandparents' house, her uncle's, um, aunt's home. And I can just, uh, remember her telling me that, uh, as she was riding on the school bus, she seen her mom strung out on drugs, looking in the garbage can, trying to find something to eat, no shoes on her feet barely making it. She asked the bus driver to stop, stop the bus. I see my mom, which she haven't seen her mom in maybe three weeks because her mom been on the streets, trying to survive of what she knew how to. Mm. And that's whatever she knew on the streets. So when she, when the bus driver stopped, which was not right for the bus driver to do, but the bus driver seen the tears from that, her face, and say, that's my mom. All I want to do is tell my mom that I love her. All I want to do is hear my mom's voice. Mm. So she got off the bus, and she ran to her mom, and she gave her mom a hug, mm. and she said, Mom, I love you. And she said, come home, come home, come home. And her mom was so embarrassed, mm. so ashamed, mm -hmm. to, to allow her daughter to see her, the way, the condition that she was in. So as the young lady just cried, Say, I want you to come home. I miss you. She was 12. Wow. And she had to get back on the bus because, you know, it, was, it would be the bus driver's fault for allowing that child to go with her mom. But when she got home, she got off the school bus, and she thought about it, and she ran in the house, and she told her grandmother, I see my mom, and I hugged my mom, hmm. and I told my mom I loved her, and I missed her. And her, her grandmother got so angry. Her grandmother was angry. She said, why would you do that? You shouldn't have said anything. You shouldn't have got off the bus. You should have just came home. So the, mom, the young lady was so upset because that's her daughter that's out there. She says, you're not going to help my mom. You're not going to help your daughter. Right. So the young lady she just felt sad. She didn't eat. She cried. She went in the room. She just like, there's nothing I can do. I'm young. But today, that young lady is 30 years old. Mm. She has two kids. And her mom just recently got out of prison. Wow. And the love that she has for her daughter, for being there, supporting her through the hard times of her life, and that they can share with one another, and then have that, still that connection. And then that her children, um, which is the young, young lady's um, grand. Right. Grandkids still have that bond together wow. because of the love, the connection, and, and, and how it comes together to work for the good. So the girl that came to you when she was 12 years old, what did you, how did you work with her? What did you do to help her? Teaching her how to love herself. Mm -hmm. Learning how to, even though it may seem hard and it may not be, look like that she's going to be able to have that connection back with her mom. I kind of guide her and gave her the skills and say, you, you learn to love yourself and don't, don't, don't let no one, don't, do not allow no one to say that a person will never change. Right. What a gift you gave her. Yeah. Wow. I mean, most of the people that come are in unstable homes? Unstable due to the econ economy. Mm -hmm. um, um, a, a, lot, a lot of uh, 
uh, clients that we work with don't have uh, the basics for their babies. Right. Pampers. Right. Um, formula. They yeah. don't have that to feed the babies. A lot of them don't have proper clothing. Right. They do what they can do with what they have to do it with. A lot of them don't work. A lot of them get um, the, the benefits. Um, but that's one of the things you help them with, right? Job readiness and preparedness. Job readiness, um, preparing for a job, yeah. the resume. Yeah. Um, how to build that self-confidence. Because a lot of them don't believe in themselves. So you have to learn how to love yourself. How do you do that? The, to build the confidence? Yeah. Encourage them to look in the mirror. A lot of them don't like looking in the mirror because they're ashamed to see what they see mm. when they look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. They don't believe in themselves. So what do you do when you look in the mirror? What do you have them, do they say something to themselves or do they? The tears roll down their face. Because they never, they never realize how beautiful they are and how someone can love them for who they are. Mm. A lot of them come and they want to change for the person Right. For another person. Right. And they don't have to So do that they'll that. get love. So they can get love. Right. Appro uh, get approval from others. So they can be who they are for another person. And we share, no, be who you are. Yeah. And if you wait patiently, you will know who you will become. Hmm. So you teach them to accept themselves yes. for who they are and to, to actually love who they are despite love their are. circumstances. Yes. And how to balance, balance life. Mm. You know, yeah. we, you know, walking, walking through a darkness, realize one day you will come out and there is light. Mm. They say there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. This is where I'm at. I'm in the light. I was in the tunnel. I came out and this is who I am today. Mm. I'm a living testimonial. Absolutely. So if you... You know, if you could share a secret with these young people and also just with anybody that w is suffering or is struggling in their own life, what would you say would be, I'm sure there's more than one, but what would be the secret to living a happy and successful Perseverance. life? Perseverance. Know your purpose and have a passion. And I remember when we talked earlier, you said to be real. You have to. For yourself. Once you're real with yourself, people can see who you are. But if you wear that mask on your face, and there's a lot of people wearing a mask on your face, right. to hide the hurt, to hide the pain, the sorrow. And you have to know who you are. You've come such a long way. You came from, I think your word was hell. Oh, yeah. And when now, I thought it was hell, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it felt like hell. Yeah, it felt like hell, yeah. It was like, wow. Jeez. And you've had second chance, last opportunity for 17 years 17 now. years. And more and more people are being helped, and more and more people are feeling better about themselves and helping other people. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is what we share in the community. There are organizations and and uh, that helps people to move forward ahead. Yeah. And Second Chance is one of those agencies. Right. We want to see people help themselves and give them the tools to be who they should have been a long time ago. Mm. Take the mask off your face. You know, everyone goes through a sorrow um, go through a, a moment of sorrow, pain, disappointments. But it shouldn't keep you down. It's just a, a, a way of helping you to grow. It's called growing pains. Right. That's it. Right. We think of growing pains as from being a little kid to being an adult, but it's also an emotional. It's emotional. Mm -hmm. yeah. You are an extraordinary person. I'm so honored to even know you and be your friend. And I wish Second Chance, Last Opportunity, all the best wishes in the world. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here to share 
what I went through to help others to come out. Thank you for sharing your story. And thank you for joining us on the Red Couch. <laughs>